Warning, this episode will make you want cake and not just any cake. Rich and decadent chocolate cheesecake cake. We have this Oreo crust that your dark chocolate cake layers are baked on top of. And then in between your layers, you have a cheesecake filling. It's just soft and it's got that kind of tangy flavor element to it that pairs really well with the bittersweet dark chocolate and then the sweet buttercream. And the buttercream on this one is actually a dark chocolate fudge buttercream. Can somebody please pass the milk? Welcome to the Why Magazine podcast, bringing you ideas, stories, and voices from Brigham Young University. I'm Whitney Archibald, and in this episode, we'll be talking to Courtney Carlston Rich about how her time at BYU prepared her for her future, how she discovered her passion for cake and turned it into a career, and how her faith has helped her with all the unexpected pivots along the way. You may know Courtney from her popular Instagram account, Cake by Courtney. Maybe you've used her cookbook or taken a class or two from her, either online or at Orson Gigi in Salt Lake. Or maybe you've seen her on The Kelly Clarkston Show, The Today Show, Studio 5 on KSL, or in Oprah Magazine. All I know is, if you've ever made one of Courtney's original cake recipes, you'll never forget her. And if you haven't made one of her cakes, today is your lucky day, because she shared two recipes in the winter 2023 issue of Y Magazine, that chocolate cheesecake recipe from the intro, plus a strawberry Biscoff cake made with those little spiced cookies that Delta Airlines gives out. You can find both recipes at magazine.byu.edu. But Courtney's first cake was not quite so decadent as those two, and it was definitely not as beautiful as the gorgeous cakes you can watch her make on Instagram. In fact, Courtney had never even made a cake until her son's first birthday 13 years ago, and she certainly never thought cake would be her bread and butter. I caught up with Courtney to talk to her about how she discovered her passion for cake, how she turned it into a career, and all of the unexpected pivots along the way. I started by asking her what she wanted to be when she grew up. I knew that I wanted to go into broadcast and media. Both of my parents were in that industry. They graduated BYU. My mom was a broadcast journalism major, and my dad was in advertising and marketing. So I grew up in that industry, and I loved it. And I remember going to Professor Griffith's office my freshman year, and I walked in and introduced myself. And he was like, great, can't wait for you to get into the program in a couple of years. And I said, oh, no, so I want to know what I can do in the newsroom right now. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> what? what are, uh, you're a freshman, you've got to take all your prereqs. I'm like, I know, but there's got to be a job. Like, is there anything I can do in there to just learn and to be in the newsroom? And I think he realized I was not going to leave his office until I got an answer that I wanted to hear. And so he set me up with uh, Professor Painter, who he's just a great mentor and was there for a couple of years while I was there. And I got working doing tape to tape editing back before there was all the cool video editing on the computer, tape to tape editing and just being in the newsroom. And I loved it. I loved my experience doing that, my internships in the industry at Paramount Studios, at Extra TV. And I graduated and actually um, shifted gears a little bit. So instead of going towards the on-air route, I end up with a consulting company, a media consulting company that does all the, the research for pilot shows and news shows and consumer marketing all around media. So that's what I ended up doing right out of college and for 13 years after. Oh, wow. Okay. So if I could hop in my time machine and visit BYU Courtney, pull up my iPhone and scroll through your Instagram with her, what do you think she would say? She'd say, that's not, that's not me. Who is that? Like, what? Cake? No, that was never part of the picture. No, no, no. And I am such a planner. I have got my notebooks and calendars. I plan my week, my day, my life, right? Like this is how I'm graduating, when I'm graduating and what I'm doing. I was very set on that broadcast career and growing that the best that I could. And no, I would have never expected. I didn't take any culinary classes ever, ever. Um, I wasn't even a great baker back then. I was an awful cook. I never made a homemade cake and I was fine in the kitchen. Looking back, I'm like, oh no, I had no idea what I was doing in the kitchen, but I tried. I did my best effort. I read a recipe and tried to figure it out, you know, cooking um, as a newlywed after I graduated. And I would have just never thought that was going to be in my wheelhouse. 
Okay. So what was your introduction to cake? (laughs) So my introduction to cake was actually 13 years ago. It was my son's first birthday. And so we were in LA kind of when the foodie scene really sparked and like took off and people were calling themselves foodies. And it was at that time that I really started noticing that my husband's parents were foodies and they were like gourmet cooks in the home. I grew up with delicious food and learning kind of the home style cooking from my mom. But the style that my in-laws had and have just was like this next level. And so I'd go, um, they lived not too far from us at the time. And we would go up for Sunday dinners and I'd go into the kitchen and just, I started noticing, okay, this, this is cool. They're doing a little bit more. Wow. That's really a great recipe. I've never had anything like that. I wanted to learn. I wanted to see what they were doing and wanted to be a good daughter-in-law and be helpful. And so I, you know, would ask, Hey, what can I do? And they would usually give me the job of chopping some kind of herb, like basil, cilantro, parsley. And I was really good at filling cups with ice. And so those were my jobs in the kitchen for the better part of four years. (laughs) So I think my young self was like, all right, I want to do something special for Weston for his first birthday. We were having friends and family over. But in the back of my mind, I was also like, maybe I could impress Rick and Connie with a homemade cake, something I had not done before. And so I went and I actually got a recipe from Bon Appetit magazine. And I picked that one because Rick and Connie would have stacks of Bon Appetit magazines on their counter. And I thought, okay, well, if the recipe comes from Bon Appetit, like it's going to be good. I know that I'm already on the right track. I had no tools. I had my mixer that I don't think I had used from the time I got it when I got married four and a half years before that. And I had horrible cake pans. Cake pans I would never recommend anyone using. And with those two items and my recipe in the magazine, I got to work. I didn't know any better. I'd never done it before. I didn't realize really what I needed. And it was a peanut butter cake with chocolate buttercream. And Weston was napping one day and I just went to work and I got it done and I loved it. It was so fun to create, to try something new and then to see it come together. And if you look at my cookbook, I have a picture of that very first cake because we all start somewhere. And I think people will often, you know, look at things on the gram or social media, you know, and say, oh my gosh, I could never do that. I'm like, but if you saw my first one, you'd realize, oh, we all got to start somewhere. And it was a poofy cake. It looked round. It just was, I didn't know about leveling. I didn't know about the right cake pans. I didn't have a single decorating tool, but I was so proud of that cake. I didn't know better. I loved it. And I loved serving it at Weston's party and watching Rick and Connie and Ryan and my friends and family dig in and like it. I was like, oh my gosh, this is so fun. That whole experience encapsulated just this really joyful feeling. And I thought, you know what? I, I want to do that again. I want to feel that way again. And so I just started practicing. I just look at recipes and say, that sounds good. Let's try that one. And then I started to notice, oh, well, interesting that in this chocolate cake recipe, they're using butter, but in this chocolate cake recipe, they're using oil and then comparing and taking notes. And it was just kind of like little side hobby as I was traveling for my consulting job, as I was starting my family and doing these different things, but it just became uh, an escape and an outlet, a place of just joy and peace when I had a moment to myself. Oh, I love that story. So when did it occur to you that this could be more than a hobby? So I'd say about six years had passed and I had started developing some of my own recipes and combinations of flavors and sharing those with friends in our new uh, town in Walnut Creek. And people were saying, hey, um, you know, can you make me a, a cake for this? Or can you share the recipe for that? Or, hey, can you come to this Relief Society event and show us how to decorate a cake? That was the first place, actually, that I did like a little cake demo. And so I was like, oh, people also like this, you know, beyond just eating it. But the teaching part, we were only in the Bay Area for a couple of years. And then we moved to Utah eight years ago. 
And when I got here, I was still doing cakes, brand new to my neighborhood and sharing the the cakes with people and getting similar responses of like, oh, that honey pear cake with the honey cream cheese buttercream was amazing. Where did you get the recipe? Oh, that was my recipe. Oh, well, can I ha- have it? You know, just those little moments. I'm like, oh, maybe there's something here. And so, you know, it took like a little bit of encouragement, you know, from others, friends and family, the self doubt creeps in and you're like, Oh, no, that food space and the food blogging space is so crowded. There's no way that I can find my way in there. And I don't know how to take pictures. I wasn't doing that. It was like my iPhone. But as I was thinking about it, and had some encouragement from my mom and my sister and some close friends. And I couldn't stop thinking about my focus groups that I used to do. And so when I was on the road, I usually, I would say 75% of the time was testing television shows, new television shows for the most part. And every time we, I mean, honestly, probably 99% of the time when I would go in to the group to get started, we would talk about what shows people were watching. And I get a list and people are like, these are my shows. And this is when I watch them. And I only have time for X, Y, and Z. And then we would show them a new program. And if it was a good show, every single time people would say, oh, I'll make room for that. I'll add that to my queue. You know, we we would discuss, okay, but you just told me you didn't have time. And they're like, no, that is good. I will make time for that. And that concept just sat with me as I thought about my blog. I thought, okay, if I'm going to do this, I got to do it in a way that one is maybe a little bit unique for the food blogging and um, food space and on Instagram and social media. And, you know, if I can create good enough content, people will make room for me. There's room for everyone, right? And so I launched my blog seven years ago and just started to grow. And in that first year, I saw quickly people wanted not the recipe itself, but to learn how to do it the right way. And I really tried to teach and show people. And I even hosted a couple classes in my home where I invited like strangers into my home and said, let me show you how to do this. Because rather than try to hire me to bake it for you or go to the bakery down the street, you will find so much more joy in that cake and the event and the experience and the memory around that cake when you create it. And when you're the one who takes it from start to finish and shares it with everyone and just that whole experience. And so that was kind of the the thing I added on to the recipes was let me teach you how to do it so that you have the confidence to go into the kitchen and do this yourself. And you're going to fall in love with it. Like that is a guarantee. You're going to fall in love with baking and being in the kitchen. And it, it took off. And then after a year, I was invited by Orson Giggy in Salt Lake to teach classes there. And so I did a first, my first class was like an 80 person demo and it was well received that we started, oh, okay, let's try um, some hands-on classes. And I've now been teaching hands-on classes with 16 people per group for six years because there is that whole element of like, we connect, we create these friendships and these experiences and I can be there to help people kind of figure out and troubleshoot what might be going wrong when they're decorating or baking. And you have all these like aha moments and people leave and they're like just so excited to go home and try it again. Yeah. It's so cool because a lot of people would just be like, okay, I make good cakes. I'm going to start a bakery, you know? Yeah. But I love that it feels like you're selling so much more than cake. Like you're bottling up that spark that you got in that kitchen and that's yes. that's what you're sharing. <laughs> yes. That and that really is. It's I didn't want to sell cakes. I love the creative process. I don't want to sit here and make the same cake over and over again. I also just felt like, okay, I experienced this amazing moment with that first cake that lit that fire and that spark in me. And not to compare my work to missionary work, but it's kind of the same thing. It's like, oh, I felt this feeling. And it was so happy and so joyful. And this is the experience and the process and the hobby that created that. Let me share that with you because it's too good to keep to myself. And looking over the last seven years, it's been my favorite part is the responses back from people, the DMs, the classes um, where people will come up and just say, 
I never knew I could love something this much. I never knew I could experience the joy that I feel from cake. It is so much more than cake. You know, for me, that joy and that peaceful feeling, I can look back and I can now recognize and tell you that that was the spirit. That was Heavenly Father trying to find a way into my heart as I was going through some really dark and hard times. And he is so smart and so good and knows us so well. It took me a while to figure it out that that's where he was coming to me, was in the kitchen. And it's just been such a neat experience personally for me to look back and see where his hand has been in this whole journey, right? Because cake was never part of the picture. But he knew there was just got to be this very specific way that he was going to be able to reach me and change my heart and affect my life the way that he has. And it was through cake. It was through being in the kitchen. And it's become such a almost sacred place to me and my home. This is my favorite thing. The whole hindsight goggles, being able to look yeah. at the, the puzzle pieces and how they fit together mm -hmm. and how inspiration played a role, even when you didn't even know you were being inspired at the moment. Yeah. I mean, the fact that you have the broadcast journalism background so that you can create great videos, you know how to be in front of a camera, you're comfortable, you know how to teach in front of people, you know how to communicate well. That is one of the pieces that changed you from just a baker, which yeah, it, it's not just, <laughs> that's an awesome thing. Yeah. But the pieces came together, all these talents that you have been putting in the time, the work, and inspired to pursue, and they all came together to create what your business is oh, now. It's the coolest thing and literally gives me chills as I sit here and think about it. Because as much as I planned my life and what I was going to do, I would have never planned it this way. And now I can't imagine it not planned this way. And how cool it is that all these different experiences from childhood. I mean, you start to go back and, you know, connect the dots. And each of our lives, as you look at your own journey, you're just like, oh, he was right there. And then he put this puzzle piece next to that one. And I didn't even realize they were matches. And, you know, it, it kind of hit me the day, um, it was in 2019 that I walked into studio one a to do a segment on the today show. And I just kind of sat there for a minute and I was like, oh my gosh, here I am all these years later after graduating with my broadcast journalism degree, all these years later after thinking, you know, I wanted to be on air. Here I am. And I'm here because of cake. Who would have thought like, how cool is that to be able to look back? And it's so hard when you're in the, the midst of it and there's so much trust needed and so much faith and just hope that our plan is going to work out because I had a lot of doubt for a really long time. I lacked a lot of hope. And I lacked some of that trust in our Heavenly Father. And he showed up. He was always there. It wasn't even like he just showed up in the final hours. He was always there. And it was me who needed to look for him and to see him. And I just, I don't know. I think it's such a big part of my testimony. He will come to us where we are, wherever that may be, where he knows we're going to hear him. And maybe that is in the kitchen Maybe that is quilting. Maybe that's when you're with your kids or you're out on a walk or whatever it could be. Oh, man, that is so beautiful. Well, can you give me just a picture of what your business looks like today? Yeah. So uh, seven years into it, I currently have a product line of cake tools that I have created and designed to be really functional for the home baker, after years of testing different products and trying different tools, I'm like, none of these are doing what I want them to do. Let's make life easier for people. And so there's just design tweaks. The weight of a scraper was a huge one. I'm like, oh, they need to be lightweight. They need to be this metal. So I created the products. I have a cookbook that I self-published and I did a podcast for a little bit called Courtney Beyond the Cake. I also had for a little bit tested out <laughs> um, a cake box subscription service and was doing that for about a year in 2019. A lot of learning there. I have a lot of TV opportunities. So those are kind of the big projects right now. Oh, I've got 
my classes at Orson Giggy and I have online courses that I do as well. Well, and judging by the quality of your Instagram, that's a big part of your business as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, feel, I actually have two Instagram accounts. One is for my shop and my products. And so I have a team that runs that one. And then the Cake by Courtney Instagram is still on me. So there's a lot of content creation that goes around that too. And then uh, the blog, the blog is still up and going cake by Courtney.com. So new recipes are constantly being posted there. And there's probably over 200 or so different cake recipes on there and cookies and just other fun baked goods. So it seems like one of the talents you have developed along the way, along with some of the others we've talked about is the art of the pivot which can be scary. Like to, <laughs> like you were saying with the subscription yeah. service, you'd put a lot into that and had to decide to pivot away. How do you make those decisions and how does inspiration play a role? Um, gosh, inspiration for me is usually super, super quiet. And it comes back several times in just these feelings or these thoughts. And when I was doing the cake boxes, I was so excited about them. Um, I knew that we had some hurdles. I knew that maybe our uh, kind of organizational structure of it was not the best, but it was the best we could do for not, you know, selling our house and going all in on a our own production facility and, and so many things. So I was kind of outsourcing a lot of things. There's a lot of moving parts to it. But we had some great momentum at the beginning. I was featured in O Magazine and did some television segments around it. And there was a point kind of maybe six months into it where the people who were doing it loved it and were having a great experience. There were things I was still trying to improve upon with the experience and what they were receiving, but it wasn't growing the way I hoped. Even after Oprah Magazine and the Today Show and these different things, the growth had kind of plateaued. And so I started to get the feeling like, huh, maybe this is not what I'm supposed to be doing right now. But I sat with that for a couple months by myself. I really battled that one because I did not want to feel like I failed. And we put so much time and effort and money into it. So I just kept having this impression and this feeling like you need to let go. And towards the end of the year in 2019, I told Ryan, I said, hey, I think we've got to stop the subscription boxes. And the second I made the decision and told Ryan, followed by announcing it to users and my followers, the anxiety, the worry, the upset stomach and butterflies I felt all around it that had been sitting and festering, they went away. And I felt so much relief and I felt the weight just taken off my shoulders. I knew it was the right decision. I knew that that had been the spirit saying, hey, we got to stop right now and we've got some other things to do. And you go three months into 2020 and we have this huge pandemic. The business would, that part of my business would not have survived. We would not have kept that going and it would have been probably a bigger disaster for me. Um, there was so much learning there. There was so much learning and growth in that experience. And also just trusting that gut feeling, that feeling led by the Holy ghost. That is scary. It then kind of opened the doors and opportunity for me to do my podcast. And I did that for a little while and really loved it. And so I started Courtney beyond the cake, which was just a podcast that I interviewed people with stories to share. And I did that for about a year and a half. And then that same feeling came back to me that I had with the cake boxes, just kind of that, I think it's time to be done. And again, I was like, what, but this is good. And I, you know, I don't have millions of listeners or anything, but I probably had a few thousand. I mean, I had people listening that would write in and say they really enjoyed it, needed it. But I had that feeling sit with me again for a while. Just that feeling of, okay, time to close the door on that one. And I did. And as soon as I did, that same thing happened. The weight lifted. And so, you know, I give a lot of thought into what I want to do and how I can share the talents that Heavenly Fathers helped me develop with others and hopefully enhance their lives in some way or inspire them or just brighten their day. And so I really, I 
every day in my prayers, I'm asking like, how do I use this platform and my business to do your work? Like, what can I be doing? And I sometimes really struggle to find the answer to that. I'm still learning it. I'm still asking for guidance there. But I think really just kind of that idea of bringing our Heavenly Father and Christ into every aspect of our lives has been a game changer for me. He's not just there on Sundays when I go to church, but I have invited him to every single part of my life. It's beautiful. And I like the title of your podcast, Beyond the Cake, because I feel like that really describes your whole mentality and your whole business, that it's not really about cake. It's what you can accomplish through cake, perhaps. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Yeah. I'm guessing you have put some thought into that. Like, what would you describe as the mission of your company? Overall, like the big, big one is to bring joy to other people and to help them feel good about whatever they need to feel good about that day or that moment that they're watching. I hope that when people come to my blog, to my Instagram, to my classes, to my products, to that they feel the weight lifted off their shoulders for a minute. Life is heavy and we all know that everyone is going through something and we need the moments where we can connect and just feel happy together. Even if it's just for a 30 second video watching someone decorate cake. And I hope those little moments on social media and in classes, they grow and create this desire for those people to step outside their comfort zone and try something new. I hope it's cake. I hope it's baking. But if it's something else, awesome. Like I just want them to kind of dive into the idea that they're good enough to spend time on. They're good enough to try something new and and learn a hobby and do something for themselves. Like there's so much more, the trickle effect of that confidence and that joy that hopefully this cake world and what I'm doing brings into their lives can then do for the people around them. Maybe you've already accepted Courtney's challenge and have gathered your ingredients and baking supplies while you've been listening. If not, I hope she's inspired you to revisit another hobby you love. We're going to leave you with one last treat, a lightning Q&A round with Courtney. Beautiful cake or delicious cake? Delicious. First, always. Yep. Excellent. Are cupcakes really cake? No. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Is it cake or the Great British Baking Show? Great British baking show. Favorite cake flavor? Uh, Olive oil ricotta cake with strawberry basil filling and a lemon mascarpone frosting. Jaw dropping. Okay. Um, (laughs) Favorite cake ingredient? Cocoa powder, which is different from what I just said is my favorite, but that was the first one that came. A good quality dark cocoa powder. Great. A cake related tool you couldn't live without? Oh, my mixer. Okay. And what is the meaning of life? No, I'm just kidding. That's not a lightning round question. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for listening to the Y Magazine podcast. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss an episode. And don't forget to look up Courtney Rich's cake recipes in the winter 2023 issue of Y Magazine. This episode was created by Whitney Archibald, audio production and original music by Jarrett Davis, and production and oversight by Dania Palmer and Peter Gardner.